1859. The English natural historian Charles Darwin put forward a theory, the theory of evolution. According to the imaginary scenario of evolution, lifeless matter supposedly came together by chance in such a way as to give rise to the first living cell. Of course, there was no scientific basis to Darwin's claims. Evolutionists took advantage of the primitive level of technology in the past to deceive the public for decades. It is as if they had cast a spell over them. However, scientific advances eventually stripped Darwinists' masks away. All the relevant branches of science revealed countless pieces of evidence refuting the theory of evolution. Two thousand seven. The Atlas of Creation permitted the people of Europe to see the facts for the first time because the Atlas laid out a reality, the fossil record, which annihilated all the claims of the theory of evolution. Not only is this giant book, consisting of the highest quality photographic illustrations, convincing and impressive in appearance, it also has attracted considerable attention because of the proofs of God's sublime creation and the scientific information refuting the theory of evolution that it contains. Two thousand eight. Reports of the collapse of Darwinism are pouring in from all over the world. Public opinion polls in 34 major countries show that belief in creation is snowballing and that the theory of evolution is on its last legs. In addition, many scientists are turning towards God and saying that all of life was created. The numbers of the proponents of evolution are declining day by day. The people of Europe are turning to God in waves. Say, truth has come and falsehood has vanished. Falsehood is always bound to vanish. Shortly after the Atlas of Creation had been published in Turkish and English, the French language edition appeared and evoked a considerable response in France. Although it is now more than a year since the Atlas arrived in France, evolutionists have still not recovered from the shock it caused. The number of people in France who believe in the fact of creation is increasing by the day. Having seen the truth, the French public now entered into the real enlightenment, thanks to the Atlas of Creation. There now follows a selection of reports showing the psychological collapse that Harun Yahya's Atlas of Creation has inflicted on Darwinists.
The December 2007 edition of the well-known French magazine, Science et Vie, devoted nine pages to Harun Yahya's Atlas of Creation and its impact on the world, particularly France. The comments in the magazine regarding the Atlas, from a confirmed evolutionist publication, clearly revealed the defeat of the theory of evolution and the traumatic psychological effect this has had on evolutionists. An atlas sent to all schools in 2007 and that refutes the theory of evolution came just like a cold shower. The arrival of the Atlas of Creation literally had a shock impact in France, which had for decades been subjected to Darwinist and materialist indoctrination. The term, like a cold shower, in the report is one sign of this shattering impact. Dominique Rojant, a SVT inspector of national education, says, this is the first major Muslim-based action in this area. This means that creationism has influenced all religious beliefs with a considerable success. In these words, materialist circles, stunned by the scale of their sudden defeat, have once again been forced to admit the superiority of the Atlas of Creation in the intellectual struggle taking place. The way that European students exposed to a Darwinist education have now seen the invalidity of the theory of evolution has come as a surprise to the proponents of materialist philosophy. Adeline Lecaux, professor of life sciences and earth at one Paris high school, sets out her thoughts on the subject. Opposition is much sharper than before. I have five convinced opponents of evolution in my class. Some are excellent students. They back their replies up in a much bolder manner, referring to the arguments of Harun Yahya, which they found on the Internet. According to Ani Mamissier, Ministry of Education Inspector General and a senior of Life Sciences and Earth Department, some situations sometimes arise in which high school students write the answers to exam questions about the theory of evolution in the way they have been taught at the school, but also write that they do not agree with the theory of evolution. The French Daily La Liberation carried a report on 22 April 2008 headed, The anthropologist Pascal Pic says that creationism is growing stronger. In the paper, which has a circulation of 140,000, reference was made to the strengthening of creationism in France and the impact the Atlas of Creation has had on this change. Sarkozy's statements agreeing with what creationists and the opponents of secularism have been saying came as a great surprise to me. In their eyes, the reason for the evils of the 20th century is that people turned their backs on religion. What is the evidence? People who turned their backs on the Creator turned into animals behaving in conformity with Darwin's theory. If someone is taught that he is descended from a lower order of animal, and is given no religious instruction, then this leads to all kinds of disasters. For that reason, evolution must be removed from the education syllabus. The media were largely unconcerned by Islamic creationist movements. Until, that is, the Turkish writer Harun Yahya's Atlas of Creation reached thousands of people. Then there was literally complete panic because a book from a Muslim country had fallen like a rock into the sea of realities. Politis, 
a French weekly news journal, took anti-evolutionary creationist activities as its cover story under the banner headline, Creationist Attack on Darwinism. The article stated that university students began doubting the theory of evolution, now that the atlas of creation had spread through the country. Universities have been slow to realize this. They never expected that students would one day assail them with these questions. The arrival in Europe of the Atlas of Creation has led to serious panic among materialists and Darwinists across the continent. They say that the Atlas, which they say bears no resemblance to any other work opposed to evolution they have previously seen, is far more of a threat from the point of view of their own intellectual systems than all other anti-Darwinist works to date. So much so, in fact, that they have even tried to ban the book. Following a session discussing the teaching of creationism in schools, the Council of Europe, headquartered in the French city of Strasbourg, went on to hold a press conference on 4 October 2007. The main subject of the conference was the Atlas of Creation, which lay on the table throughout. At the press conference, Anne Brazur a politician from Luxembourg who recently submitted a report to the council picked up the atlas to show it to the assembled journalists and went on to say, Harun Yahya is a Muslim, Turkish creationist. This is the first volume. There are two more. It has been sent out to Europe in two languages, English and French. It says that the theory of evolution is a lie, that Darwinism is the root cause of terror, and that it is responsible for the dictators of the 20th century and the like. Asked by a journalist about the messages that had been received in response to the report, the parliamentarians answered. Generally speaking, we received negative emails. Very few letters supported the report. The letters were all opposed to the report. The Commission and I were generally described as people with no respect for freedom of expression and freedom of religion. Through its attitude to the Atlas of Creation, the Council of Europe made it clear that it was quite able to ignore such concepts as democracy and freedom of thought and belief when these clashed with its own views. On the other hand, such great fear of an idea, the atlas of creation being seen as a danger solely because it proves the oneness and existence of God, confirms the truth of the message contained within the book. The atlas of creation, which has spurred Europeans who claim to espouse democracy and freedom of ideas and belief to adopt contradictory policies, such as book banning, is still the subject of debate. And what is more, the shock waves from it are spreading ever wider. Belgium. De Morgan, a popular Belgian daily published in Flemish, carried a third report regarding Harun Yahya's Atlas of Creation on 16 February 2008. The report emphasized how belief in the theory of evolution had been on a continual decline in Belgium in the wake of the Atlas of Creation. The report, which also constituted the daily's cover story, went on to say the following under the headline a major conspiracy against the theory of evolution. I do not believe that we are descended from apes. It is stated in the Quran that this is untrue. Muslims have been asked in recent weeks why they reject the theory of evolution. The questioner invariably encounters the same name every time, Harun Yahya. The year of Darwin, the founder of the theory of evolution, is approaching, 
But at the same time, the theory is being increasingly rejected in this country. A great many Muslim students, for instance, reject the idea that living things have a common ancestor and evolved over the course of centuries. From the end of the 1990s, they have dedicated themselves to opposing Darwinists. They waged that struggle on a gradual basis. In 2005, half of the Turkish science teachers still believed in the theory of evolution. Last year, however, according to a similar poll, the figure had fallen to only one in four. Corriere della Sera, Italy's most widely read daily, devoted considerable space to the impact in Europe of the Atlas of Creation. The report in the paper, which has a circulation of some 700,000, appeared under the cover page headline, Christians and Muslims Join Forces Against Darwinism, and continued under the heading, Teachers in Belgian Schools Are Boycotting the Theory of Evolution covering the reactions of teachers to Darwinist education. A new alliance between Christian and Muslim teachers. According to some professors who teach students biology or natural sciences, Darwin's claims are all lies and are unworthy of being taught. They believe in creation and that the origins of human life lie not in orangutans, but in an infinite divine power, and that is what they teach their students. In their view, Adnan Oktar, also known as Harun Yahya, is right. In its 9 February 2008 issue, the Belgian French language daily, Le Soir, referred to the Atlas of Creation, which had been banned in the country. A short while ago, the Atlas of Creation was offered to schools and universities as well as large national libraries. European libraries were stunned by this large illustrated book written by a Turk called Harun Yahya with the aim of refuting the theory of evolution. A book being sent to the section for burning means that it has shocking subject matter. La Libre, a Belgian daily, noted the rapid spread in the country of belief in creation on 14 March 2008. Creationism is making rapid progress. There is no doubt that certain religious groups are having a huge impact in this sphere. We must remember the Atlas of Creation that was sent out to French schools last year. In this brick-like 800-page volume, the author, a Turk who writes under the pen name Harun Yahya, takes the Quran as his basis for rejecting the theory of evolution. Great Britain. The world-famous press agency, Reuters, whose news reports serve one billion people every day, carried a story containing extracts from an interview with Adnan Oktar by Tom Hennigan, the agency's senior religious correspondent based in its Paris office. Titled, Muslim Creationist Preaches Islam and Awaits Christ. The report said, Harun Yahya is one of the most widely distributed authors in the Muslim world. His glossy books and DVDs on religion and science sell in Islamic bookshops around the globe. He lets readers download much of his work from his websites for free. In its May-June 2008 issue, the magazine New Humanist, which has been published in London ever since 1885, carried an article about the rise of creationism in Europe. The story, 
by a Danish evolutionist professor noted the impact Adnan Oktar's work was having in Europe. Before the book arrived, many had no idea there was a resurgent Muslim creationism in Europe. One thing is clear. Creationism has indeed come to Europe. Therefore, we have to take it seriously. What we have seen so far is just the beginning. The British Morning Star, publishing organ of the Communist Party, announced its unease at the rise of creationist belief with the headlines, Rise of the Evolution Deniers, and Ken MacLeod investigates the disturbing rise of evolution denial in British society. The collapse in Europe of Darwinism, the supposed scientific basis for communism, is alarming the proponents of communist ideology because there can be no communism where there is no Darwinism. With the realization of the false nature of Darwinism, communism has today lost the support it used to draw from Darwinism and is condemned to be remembered as a discredited ideology. This is what the article had to say about the rise in the belief in creation. 35 years ago, I mentioned creationism to one of my zoology tutors at Glasgow University. Nobody, he said, takes these people seriously. Today, another of my former tutors, Roger Downey, who is now professor of zoological education at Glasgow University, has to take creationism, or evolution denial as he prefers to call it, a bit more seriously than that. In Islam, Creationism is more mainstream than it is in Christianity. The most prominent Muslim creationist, the Turkish writer Harun Yahya's books and CDs are finally produced. Germany. On 20 September 2007, daily Kölner Stadt Anzeiger, published in the German cities of Cologne and Bonn, carried a report concerning the Atlas of Creation. Under the heading, The Truth About Harun Yahya, the report by Helmut Frangenberg said, Adnan Oktar is one of the proponents of anti-evolutionary creationism, who has the most destructive impact on evolution. The Atlas of Creation is Adnan Oktar's masterpiece. It is a rather costly book printed on glossy paper, consisting of stunning illustrations of fossils. The English language edition of the magazine Science referred to the Atlas of Creation as the most gorgeous looking attack on evolution seen in a long time. The marketing of the book has been perfectly planned, so much so that the book reached all the teachers in Cologne on the same day. It is a fact that if children and young people turn over the pages of the book, they will inevitably be influenced by its magnificent presentation. The wolf skulls, fish, insect, or hyena fossils in the atlas all send out the same message. They have remained unchanged for millions of years, and evolution never happened. The 9 July 2007 edition of the Süddeutsche Zeitung, one of Germany's main dailies, carried an article about the great impact of Adnan Oktar's works on the subject of creation, particularly the Atlas of Creation. The book provoked a wide reaction in France last spring. Thousands of copies of the book fell, as if from a lofty void onto the desks of teachers, school principals, library curators and editors. The book is printed on glossy paper, 800 pages long, and weighs about six kilograms, or 12 pounds. Its message is clear. Darwin lied. There is no evolution. God created the world, 
and created all at once. Russia. The works of Adnan Oktar have also had a considerable impact in Russia, which was governed by a communist regime for so many years and in which Darwinism was literally an official policy of state. There has been a great decline in the number of believers in Darwinism. This state of affairs was discussed in a report in Russia's top-selling daily, Komsomolskaya Pravda, published in Moscow, with a circulation of 3.1 million. The cover story appeared under the headline, Scientists Search for God. The world around us did not appear spontaneously, but was created. That paper, which was established in 1925 as the official organ of the Young Communist League, questioned the theory of evolution and covered metaphysical questions that science cannot answer. Covering the views of scientists holding religious beliefs, shows that Darwinism and materialism have been dealt a heavy blow in Russia. The way that tens of Harun Yahya's books and some 70 of his documentaries have been read and watched for years in Russia, and the way that the public keep up with his ideas by downloading thousands of his works from his Russian websites, has without a doubt had a major influence on the Russian public's current turning to God. Switzerland. On 3 and 4 May 2007, Blick, one of Switzerland's largest newspapers, carried two reports examining the works of Harun Yahya. The reports emphasized how work on the fact of creation had risen to the top of the Swiss agenda. Whole Switzerland is now discussing the issue, heated and emotional. On 2 May 2007, Le Matin, one of Switzerland's main dailies, referred to the powerful effect of the Atlas of Creation in these terms. Creationism is taught in schools in America. In Europe, such propaganda is well on the way. An extraordinary atlas has invaded Switzerland. Holland. The Dutch language copies of the Atlas of Creation were sent out to a number of schools and universities. Minister of Education Maria van der Hoven admits to not believing in chance in the evolution of living things. Dever Dieping Trouw, one of Holland's top dailies with a circulation of 105,000, carried a report on 26 July 2007 headed An Empire of Turkish Creationism. This provided a detailed account of Harun Yahya's life and referred to the impact of the Atlas of Creation. The Atlas, an expensive tome filled with propaganda against the theory of evolution, was sent free of charge to scientists, journalists, and schools. The Atlas of Creation is a superbly designed book Weighing 6.6 .6 kilograms and at 800 pages, this stunningly attractive book is full of top quality photographs of fossils. Denmark. The 13 September 2007 edition of Politiken, Denmark's highest circulation daily, carried a report titled 
an anti-Darwinist bombardment. The article in the paper, which has a readership of around half a million, contained the following lines about the Atlas of Creation. An international campaign against the theory of evolution has hit Denmark. The book, which holds Darwin responsible for Nazism and terrorism, among others, weighs 6.5 kilos and is 765 pages long. As he himself says, Harun Yahya has obtained good results from his campaign, which is now apparently about to conquer Europe. Darwin's theories face a final defeat. With his books, Harun Yahya means to give people an instrument to help them return their faith in God. The 13 September 2007 edition of Jitske Veskisten, a Danish daily with a circulation of 100,000, devoted a whole page to a report concerning the Atlas of Creation. The report included a picture of biology teachers examining the Atlas and went on to say, Jorgen Hvitved, who teaches biology, said, This is the most attractive book I have ever seen, as he leafed through its pages. This book, which questions Darwin's theory of evolution, was sent out to the school's seven biology teachers in June this year. Jorgen Hvitved was delighted to receive the book and will use it in biology classes on the theory of evolution. I shall tell my students that there are other ideas about evolution. There are millions of people in the world who believe in creation, and my students need to be aware of this, says Hvitved. This is an extraordinarily beautiful book. Polish Deputy Education Minister Miroslav Orczychowski has said that Darwin's theory is a lie and should not be taught in schools. In a statement recently issued at the Ministry of Education, the Polish Education and Deputy Education Ministers said, the theory of evolution is a lie, and in the same way that wrong should not be taught instead of right, lies such as the theory of evolution should not be taught. This site, called Rajonalista, which receives an average of 10,000 visits a day, also provided information about the works of Harun Yahya. Some of the statements carried under the heading, A Major Creationist Muslim Offensive, read, This impressive book says that Darwinism underlies all kinds of evil mindsets. The atlas is 768 pages long and weighs 5.5 kilograms. It is a flawless work in A3 format and printed on very high quality paper. Its cloth cover contains holograms of animals. The book contains thousands of colored illustrations, graphs and diagrams. Such books are very expensive in bookshops. But this book has been sent out free of charge to many people around the world. Northern Ireland The Belfast Telegraph, which enjoys a circulation of more than 100,000, described Turkey as the headquarters of creationism. It interpreted the increasing decline in the number of believers in evolution in Turkey and the fact that 99% of the people believe in God as a consequence of Harun Yahya's work. Spain. El Periódico, a Spanish daily, 
carried a report about the Atlas of Creation in its 29 March 2007 edition. The report in the paper, which appears in Spanish and Catalan language editions and has a circulation of 150,000, was titled, Barcelona University Professors Receive a Mysterious Book Against Darwin, and said, According to statements by Francisco Javier Casado from the Central Library, one of the recipients of the book, this volume is 800 pages long and luxuriously printed and contains illustrations and photographs of an extraordinary high quality in which all possible colors are employed. The dean of the biology faculty goes on to say, the atlas is spectacular with an exceedingly luxurious appearance and visually perfect photographs and with all colors being used. Serbia. <laughs> Minister of Culture Liljana Kolic recommended that evolutionary history be removed from primary school lessons or that, as an appropriate alternative, creationist education should also be provided. Italy. A large Italian daily, Libero, carried a long report titled, Creationists, Is Darwin to Blame for September 11th? On 20 May 2007, the report devoted wide space to the works of Harun Yahya. In its 19 June 2007 edition, Avenire, a daily newspaper affiliated to the Roman Catholic Church and based in Milan, the center of the Italian press, carried a second report concerning the Atlas of Creation. The report in the Italian language paper, which enjoys a circulation in excess of 100,000, was written by Fiorenzo Faccini and said, the monumental Atlas of Creation by the Turkish Muslim author Harun Yahya, real name Adnan Oktar, was written for that purpose and maintains that the history of life on Earth is to be explained in terms of creation, with no evolutionary process being involved. The latest scientific findings have dealt a body blow to materialism and Darwinism. The effect of the work revealing the invalidity of the theory of evolution is also reflected in the results of various public opinion polls. The results have revealed a very powerful creationist trend across the world, and this is a matter of grave concern to evolutionists. The statistics obtained show that people no longer believe in evolution. For example, The Turkish public do not believe in evolution. According to one poll, the results of which were recently published by the Turkish Economic and Social Studies Foundation, TESEV, the level of those saying the theory of evolution is true stands at 10.7%, compared to 87.4% for those saying God created man. According to this poll, 11 out of 100 people in Turkey believe in the theory of evolution, in other words, that living things are the result of chance, that they came into being spontaneously over millions of years. In the late 1970s, on the other hand, 75% of Turkish citizens believed that the theory of evolution was true. Today, that figure has dropped to 11%. Ortada. Aklı ve mantığı olan ve bunu yürütebilen her insanın 
bizi yaratan Allahü Teala'nın varlığına inanmama gibi ihtimal yok zaten. Darwin teorisini çürüttüğü için özellikle ben görmeye gelmiştim. İkinci kez geliyorum. Veteriner hekimim. Zaten fosillerle bunlarda evrim teorisi tamamen tarihe gömülmüş oluyor. Bu fosiller gerçeği yansıtıyor. Çünkü canlı örnekler, gerçek örnekler. Üniversite öğrencisiyim. Sergi gerçekten çok güzel. Evrim maldat macasını gözler önüne seriyor. Sergi çok gerçekçi buldum ve inanıyorum artık evrim teorisi diye bir şeyin olmadığına. Ben arkeolojim aynı zamanda. Burada da gördüğümüz kadarıyla evrim teorisinin bu anlamda bir safsata olduğu anlaşılmaktadır. Evrim teorisi zaten artık 21. yüzyılın bir teorisi değil. Köyne bir teori. Yıllar önce çürütülmüş bir teori hala bazı çıkar çevreleri tarafından yaşatılmaya çalışılıyor. Yıllardır öğrencilere evrim teorisi diye bir iddianın olduğu, ara geçiş formlarının milyonlarca olduğu söyleniyor. Ama delil olarak bir tane bile gösterilmedi bize. Yani zaten ara geçiş formu yok. Olanlar da sahte ve bulunan bütün fosiller değişmemiş. Yani bu yani çok mükemmel, çok güzel bir olay. A poll on French scientific website has revealed that people no longer believe in evolution. Following the major impact of the distribution of the Atlas of Creation in France, the French website Science Actualité carried out a public opinion poll. The results of the survey show that Darwinism has been annihilated in France. The findings, set out under the caption, Your Views on Evolution, revealed that 92% of the public no longer believe in evolution. Darwinism has also been demolished in Germany, which now says God created life. The German daily, Die Welt, one of the country's most important publications, conducted a poll about creation on its website. 86% of the participants responded to the question, how do you think life came into being, by saying, God created it. The Danish people no longer believe in evolution. According to the results of a survey conducted on its website by the daily Extra Bladet, one of Denmark's highest circulation publications, Danes no longer believe in evolution. Asked, do you think that human beings are descended from apes? 88% of the Danish public answered, no. According to a poll in Germany, the public no longer believe in evolution. They say, evolution, no thanks. According to a poll regarding whether or not evolution actually happened, that appeared on the website of Süddeutsche Zeitung, one of Germany's main dailies, the level of those believing that human beings are the work of a creator stands at 87%. According to a survey in Switzerland, the public say that creation should be taught. The level of people believing in the fact of creation stood at 85% in a poll conducted on the website of Blick, one of Switzerland's widest read newspapers. It is no longer possible to save Darwin and by extension the theory of evolution bequeathed by him. The true facts have been revealed and the false masks worn by those who lied in the name of science have been torn away. And Charles Darwin has gone down in history as the founder of the greatest scientific fraud in the history of the world. Evolutionist attempts to regain their lost prestige are therefore all in vain. The fact of creation is continuing to spread ever wider in a manner that cannot be prevented.
The latest developments, some instances of which we have seen in this film, have revealed a most significant truth. No matter how materialists and atheists strive to hinder the spread of religious moral values, no matter how they seek to obscure the light of God, Darwinism, the foundation of their worldview, has finally collapsed. Mankind will be freed from such deceptions in the 21st century and has already, by God's leave, begun returning to the purpose behind its creation. With the intellectual elimination of Darwinism, which leads to atheism and loss of faith, religious moral values will spread rapidly and peace and security will prevail on earth. By the will of God, floods of people will turn to religion in the very near future. And, as promised by our Lord, the light of God will prevail over the whole earth. Rather, we hurl the truth against falsehood, and it cuts right through its brain, and it vanishes clean away. Woe without end for you, for what you portray. They desire to extinguish God's light with their mouths, but God will perfect his light, though the unbelievers hate it. It is he who sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to exalt it over every other religion, though the idolaters hate it.